Do 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 do. Yeah. Hey guys, Beck here, and I am very excited to be here today with my dear friend Louise Androlia. Um, you may know her as Lunaverse on Instagram and Twitter. And um, we are in, I reckon, like our favourite place in the world, maybe. It's our favourite place. Yeah. <laughs> it's at the Rose Garden in um, Regent's Park. And um, yeah, we met here for our first date, I think. I know, didn't we? And it's all of our dates. <laughs> all of our <laughs> dates. Have I seen you outside the No, time? we only know we each other in the Rose Garden. <laughs> Or online. That's, That's not weird, is itself, it? Yeah. yeah. It's like that weird sundial show. <laughs> the two intuitives on yeah. either side of the park. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we, we live on either side of the park. So, we meet near the roses because we just love the roses. Yeah. And you love the animals. Yeah. We yeah. just come here and sit and watch and soak up the smell. Yeah, the smell yeah. and the we'll vibes. pick another part once it gets to winter. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the zoo. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I'm really excited to have Lou here. Um, she's an um, intuitive coach and um, a tarot reader. Um, she guides people through their own healing journey. And after um, your own journey, of, you were 21 when you got your chronic pain condition, yeah, right? Yeah, chronic pain condition and post-traumatic stress, which is kind of over a four to five year period. Mm -hmm. So that was my kind of big hunk of lessons all, mm. all in one mm. one go really so. Mm. and so your journey was it very much healing yourself and then waking up and then healing other people yeah I think that I very much see that experience for me as my lessons you know mm. in, in the thick of it I had to leave university I couldn't walk I was you know yeah. had post-traumatic stress you know I thought I was going mad like you know in this space of time it was awful but you know I kind of now I look at it and it's like that very obvious situation like that was my gift you mm -hmm. know and I do you know I couldn't be more grateful because I kind of I think got it all thrown at me because I learned all this amazing stuff about the body you know I, I got myself healthy just through holistic methods mm -hmm. and then learned so much about the human brain and like processing everything with the trauma and then you know it mm -hmm. came out and it was like this is obviously you know what I've been given to you know because it was kind of so many lessons at once it was like this is clearly not for you know mm. no purpose so i love that like i love the thought of um i've got a, a poem which i wrote which is i pray you reach rock bottom which is all about like at the time you just can't understand how this like horribly dark time of your life can actually be a blessing and, and many people tell you it's yeah. a blessing and you're like yeah. it doesn't feel like it but do you yeah. believe that as well? That it's like the, 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 the moments when you get cracked open, they're actually, the suffering is actually the gift. Yeah, and I think obviously like when we first, I think anyone, you you know, you have that big experience first yeah. and yeah, you're, you're like, there's no way, you know, what the hell is going on? Mm. I hate the universe, you know, <laughs> life hates me, you know, this kind of feeling. And then once you've had one of those experiences and you can see it changing something, mm. and of course, you know, it's not that it makes that experience good, but if you can, you know, you can see it as part of your journey, mm. and, you know, and then you can, you know, when you're next in a challenge, you know, you can see where it's going. Like I uh, use a mantra that kind of came through one day for me that was my challenges are in place to lead me to higher ground. Mm. And so I always... Say that again. My challenges are in place to lead me to higher ground. My challenges are in place to lead me to higher that's beautiful so whenever I'm you know stuck mm. I'm like yeah that's my kind of centered thought knowing that all I need to do is just move mm. because I'm going you know somewhere kind of mm. with knowledge even you know and sometimes mm. it's knowledge you know that comes just with the sadness all the way mm. Mm. I love that and so I know you're like a bit of a, a, a magic girl <laughs> and then you yeah. told me how when you were little you used to um, without kind of even knowing you like cast spells, cast spells and I started casting spells when I was three <laughs> out of nowhere in the, in the back of a car on a long journey and it was always kind of the family joke but it was that thing where I clearly came in I think yeah. with, with that you know see I'm so fascinated about this it's, it's like because I know with me I always just had this feeling like I've got a mission like there's something I need yeah. to do and I couldn't work out what it was and I just pray I'd be like I want to know what it was and I couldn't I couldn't relax until I found That's it That's interesting yeah what, what do you think it's the same like is it something did you come in with a mission or or and then did the your own journey like kind of crack it open or do you think it's something that evolves in this life 
I think it is a mixture, and like it's interesting, like you say, that you came in with that kind of feeling because that's led you to the type of work you're doing, yeah. right? And I suppose the feeling, and this is, I think, we do come in with a feeling, right? Yeah, and yeah. that's the original guidance because I think the feeling I came in with was that I felt alone. Mm. You know, I felt weird. I felt alone. I was, you know, if I think of myself as a child or teenager or anything, with kind of my own intuition, I I remember always being kind of shocked or confused because I could always see people straight yeah. away I could understand people just because that's how kind of my nature works I guess mm. and I didn't understand why they couldn't see me so I had this constant longing mm. for someone to know me mm. and it wasn't about being accepted or anything it was just like I, I was like it always felt alone mm. and then you know my own journey that took me to kind of strong physical illness mm. mental illness forced me to get to know myself on such a a mm. deep level because I already had kind of had a strong spiritual practice and then I got the mind and the body mm. and you know consequently the way I love to work with clients is to let them know that it's okay not to feel okay mm. and my work is all about helping people reconnect mind body spirit because of what I noticed in my journey and what I see with a lot of people is usually if we're not feeling good in one area there's a disconnect mm. which I call like a holistic disconnect between mind body or spirit and it's kind of you know and I see I really believe we get self-empowerment through self-knowledge and self-awareness. Yeah. So I feel like maybe that I arrived with that kind of, I'm so alone, just forced me to like, you know, and then the illness, it was like, I had to get to know myself. Like, you know, now mm. I can't hide from myself at all. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, but so, yeah, I think, I, you know, but I came in definitely with, you know, I came in with casting spells. <laughs> and I think if that's not like a piece from a past life, I don't know what it is. <laughs> you know, totally. and, and like, you know, the only thing I ever wanted to be when I grew up was a witch. Now, it, it, there was a week where I wanted to work at Tesco's. And that was it. It was a witch, you know? And my mum made me my witch's costume. I had a broom. I used to run around the house, like, in full witch regalia. Like, and it was like, you know, it was kind of like my parents always talk about now, a bit of a like, family joke, because they were always laughing at me because I was so cute in this witch's outfit, like, <laughs> pretending to fly. It's like Sabrina the Teenage yeah, Witch. Yeah, but it was just always there, and it never changed. You know, that yeah. sense of kind of wonder, I think, you have as a child didn't yeah. go. And it kind what of a gift. Yeah. That's it's awesome. fun, but I was also very stubborn, so I didn't question any of that. <laughs> you know, I was like, this is just how it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And because I think what really comes through with like your online presence, particularly like your Instagram, even just the way you like style yourself for like your amazing hair. It's like, I think what a lot of, <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I think what a lot of people um, who are like healers and light workers and, and kind of like on that 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 very much like th that spiritual journey yeah they and this is was certainly the case for me they're kind of like in a spiritual closet where maybe they go to courses um or they're doing a little bit of the work and a lot of their friends know but then there's some people in their life who don't know yeah. and i think what you're awesome at is is really like overtly putting yourself out there that sounds like it yeah. comes out wrong but I think <laughs> yeah, you're very no, striking like I remember just being like wow like she's like knows who she is and she's kind of ready to to be seen yeah I think that comes from it's not that I've ever had say lapses in self-confidence or anything like that but that personal kind of awareness of my own spirit is like I was saying it's something I, you can't hide from when you found your kind of connection mm. you know your mind body spirit connection like I know if I kind of waver from myself mm. it doesn't work Mm. Right, but in terms of kind of that coming out of the closet, kind of mm. you know, it is totally that spiritual coming out it of the is. closet, um, you know. And for those you know of you who might be listening or anyone, you know, it's it's that kind of you know, how do I you know make my? I, I think it's that feeling like where people think they need to be validated, right? Yeah. Or like, who am I to be doing this work? Yeah. You know, how do I shift that? And you know, it's it's getting out of your own way. Yeah. essentially right and what I've really learned and how I think about it and this is why you know where I think I channel my own stubbornness into fearlessness right and that's I think how I get fearless I'm just stubborn I'm <laughs> yeah, just stubborn but it's great. positive stubbornness yeah. right and you know I know and like, this to me is as clear as anything is that if you have a message yeah. it's because someone is waiting to hear it mm, I that, love that. that's mm. it you know and that's as simple as that and it can be easy to get ahead of yourself and think like you know, I have to, you know, I have to straight off write a book. I have to have a million Instagram followers. I have to have mm. all these people love me or, you know, go into a room and it's like everyone has to get it. Mm. And it's like, actually, it's knowing that, you know, what you say, someone is waiting to hear it. Like mm. if I go and do a talk 
you know, my intention is if there's one person in this sea of people who takes one sentence from what I've said, that's my work done, mm. you know? And it's, it's knowing that, you know, and really, I, um, you know, the, the last time I had that kind of feeling myself where I was a bit stuck, and I was like, who am I? You know, I sat down in a kind of meditation, just closed my eyes, and, you know, the, the voice that came through was, if, you know, if you don't do this, you're doing a disservice to yourself and the world, mm. you know? And it was that thing where it was kind of like a jab and was like, it's mm. not about you. It isn't, you know? That's I love how that. you get out of your yeah. way. It's, it's not, you know, it's about you, you know, it's like if you've, you know, if you've got a message, you've had an experience, you know, it's there, you know, and the, the only thing that's really lacking in the world, you know, is there's not enough people sharing, mm. right? Because sharing is what helps people, you know, and that's mm. probably why, and I'm sure with you as well, that's why I like doing coaching and one-on-one work, because it makes me feel less alone, mm. and it makes oh. that person in front of me feel less alone, and suddenly they don't feel weird anymore. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And it's like, like weird is normal, actually. Yeah, it is. You know, I think we're all crazy. Yeah, exactly. It's just, we need to, you know. You need to find the people who are the same kind of crazy as you. Yeah, and it's just, you know, it's left, it's saying, you know, and it's that thing where it's like, you know, when we worry about what someone's going to think of us, it's like, if you're actually, you know, if you're standing in your highest self. Yeah. You, you know that doesn't that question doesn't arise you know yeah. or you know that if there is someone who says something mean to you or something it's still not about you it's about their journey and it's actually yeah. like there's going to be more people who need you there's always going to be more people I think who need to hear what you say than the one person who says oh, that's stupid right that's so true you know? yeah and there'll be one well, percent or something yeah, yeah and that's where you know it's our, our energy of where we place it you know mm. it's it's like that one person who emails you and says you know, you've changed my life, right? It's mm. better than a million people who haven't, mm. you know? And I think that's why it's good to just hone it down to that kind of present moment and just be mm. like, I have something to say. I just need, it's focus on sharing, mm. you know? And it's that idea of being of service, I guess. Mm. Isn't about us, is it? You know, it's not about our ego. It's about us helping. So then it's not actually about the outcome of like, I want to be a best-selling writer or yeah. I want to have sell out my talk or whatever. It's just about showing up. Yeah, it's mm. about showing up because sometimes, you know, like, yeah, like doing a talk, I sometimes I'm like, oh, what if someone doesn't like my outfit? Or like, what if they think I'm Your ugly? Outfit. I'm like, what if they think I'm stupid? What do I say? <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm like, it's not about me. It's yes. about me being like essentially a, a vehicle for something, you know, that I actually, you know, if I think actually, how excited am I to share this with people? I'm like yeah. super excited. And that is, you know, it's mm. always, I think, making your kind of, that's the thing, you know, for anyone who's, you know, really just wanting to start their website or see clients it's like that's what you focus on you mm. you're, make your excitement bigger than your fear you know mm. I always think I that's always great. make my will bigger than my won't and yeah. I'll do it you know I kind of you know make myself because I'm like actually if I focus on how excited I am then it's much bigger than like my kind of ego telling me I'm an idiot you know yes <laughs> I love that yeah absolutely so it's just just show up and focus on the the will <laughs> not the won't yeah yeah <laughs> just do it we should use that line like for a brand or something yeah <laughs> i don't know i wonder if it would i don't if it would work. Uh, wait let's pay the note after okay. this yeah <laughs> cool and um the last thing i want to oh no i've got two more things i want to okay. ask you one is um what lights you up what lights me up yeah ah. okay um being creative painting mm you know, writing, accessing what I say is channeling fire energy in a positive way. Because I think this... <laughs> in a positive way, yeah, yes. Because I would so say true. mismanaged fire energy is yeah. anger, frustration, boredom, yeah. restlessness. Yeah. Right? So I think, you know, passion and drive is, you know, it's being creative. Not, you know, and that comes in different ways for everyone. But for me, I need to paint or write. And I need mm. to be outside. Mm. That's it. You know, like, I'm, I'm a country bumpkin. Mm. You know, I want to be out running through forests by water <laughs> you know that's what lights me up I think nature more mm. than anything I love how when we've been met in the park in the past you've spoken about how you've um done art for your own like art's sake rather than because I know you post beautiful paintings and and all different things um on your Instagram and website etc but painting just for you yeah, yeah. I think it was that thing for age you know for a while I thought I had to make money out of everything mm. you know or make everything a job and I yeah was, and, and I think that's something as an adult actually you know as an adult we have to re-remember kind of what our hobbies are yeah you know yeah. and often that does have a kind of sense of returning to your inner child right what did you like doing when you were as a kid I yeah. always will say that to clients because we sometimes forget and we're like 
do I like, you know? Yeah. And, and it's suddenly like, okay, what did you do? And to me, I just hung out with animals. I ran around in the garden, painted, you know, cast spells, you know? So to me, my kind of light art <laughs> is, spells, is my, you know? you know, these spells, by the way, were like me trying to turn my dad into a frog, you know? Like, <laughs> did, uh, did it work? Well, luckily no, because the first time I tried was like during a car journey, and I'm like, if I turned into a frog while I was driving, it may have not been good that for would any not of have us. been good, right? So that's the reason why. Yeah, it didn't that's work. it. Yeah. Otherwise, definitely. Would work. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just you know that kind of. I'm you know I'm quite an introvert, so you know I get lit up by my recharge time as mm. well. So it's doing what makes me just feel me. Mm. Awesome. And um, final question: What is your all-time favorite tarot deck? tarot deck um okay for clients i tend to actually use the rider weight which is like the yeah. original one um and i teach you know people to use that one just because i actually really like that for teaching method but my favorite deck is called the cosmic tarot mm-hmm. but if you've ever seen it it's kind of the second deck i've got i've had it for about 10 years it's very kind of very it's like very 80s glamour even like the the it's the most beautiful illustrations like everybody look it up it's just insane but like you know the the people in it look like kind of old movie stars oh awesome it's, oh my god it's, it's divine so that's so it's called the cosmic cosmic tarot t- yeah. cosmic tarot yeah and it's cool. funny there's something about the people cards you know the court cards yeah. or any of the cards that have figures in they they seem to morph into people that you know mm. like it's so weird like there's been times when you know I've like had a crush and I'll pull out the you know the knight of something I'm like this is that person yeah like i swear they like the faces change or something there's something very kind of spooky yeah spooky about it but magic yes. even magic <laughs> even awesome yeah. well thank you for speaking with us today You're um welcome. we'll i'll post all your links underneath the video so you guys can cool. click on them um but if you want to find um lou on instagram or twitter it's at Luniverse, so it's universe but with a L O at the front. L O at the front. Yeah. Low universe. <laughs> Low universe. Low yes. universe. <laughs> cool. Um, thanks guys and we'll see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>